There will be spoilers. That's hot. Hi, welcome back to my channel. I watched This Is Paris. So you don't have to, or do you? We're gonna get to that conclusion together. The documentary has premiered as a YouTube Originals on September 14th of this year. By the time I watched, it had over 5 million views. The ratio of like to dislike was pretty good. They also have an extended version, which is just about 10 minutes more than the free version. But the extended version is for YouTube Premium members. Since I'm not a premium member, I watched the free one. Before I start, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell button so you can get notified every time I post. Also, 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 stay to the end of the video because I have a announcement to make. If you don't know Paris Hilton, she currently has 781,000 subscribers. But if you don't know who Paris Hilton is as a person, let me tell you. Paris Hilton is a 39-year-old woman who is the great-granddaughter of Comrade Hilton, the founder of the Hilton Hotels. Have you ever stayed at a Hilton Hotel? She got famous in the mainstream by participating in a show called The Simple Life in 2003. In that show, she was playing like a dumb blonde. I don't what know. is Walmart? It's like they sell wall stuff. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> and she was with Nicole Richie. And if you don't know who Nicole Richie is, Google it. But she's the daughter of a singer. I forgot his name. Hello. So in The Simple Life, they just played dumb and they just said some stupid stuff. Another way that she got known, her ex-boyfriend released a sex tape called One Night in Paris back in 2004. Kim Kardashian was her assistant and Kim Kardashian also had leaked one of those. I wonder how she learned that trick. This video is not about Kim Kardashian, let's just move on. I will be honest with you. There are many things I didn't like about this documentary and there are many things that I did like about this documentary. But watch this video and then you can decide if you wanna watch the documentary or not. And by the end of the video, I'll let you know if it's worth it. Her documentary is about an hour and 45 minutes long. The very first few minutes of the documentary, they flaunt a little bit of her riches. They superficially tell us a little bit about her history with the Hilton family, which is her family. Also, they go in touch very lightly on the scandal that I just mentioned, the fact that she has a lot of business I have 19 product lines, skincare, makeup, every type of product you can imagine. My fragrances. Mentioned that she's the number one female DJ in the world. She gets paid a million dollars per gig. I'm not sure if that's true. If you guys know anything about that, let me know. But that's the claim that they make in this documentary. It kind of swings around into a more serious kind of vibe. Something happened in my childhood that I've never talked about with anyone. I still have nightmares about it. Obviously, when it does get serious, they emphasize the real voice of Paris Hilton. This is Paris Hilton. How many voices do I have? That was your real voice. This <laughs> is Paris Hilton. A lot of people have commented on it in the past couple of weeks that I've been watching YouTube. And yes, her voice is really different from the voice of the rich, dumb blonde girl Paris Hilton persona that she does. Hey, number one, with the Coca-Cola. That's not me. They wanted to hammer that in the beginning of the documentary just to give the narrative that now we are watching the real Paris. Also, she's trying to be relatable as a person. As the documentary progresses, she starts mentioning how their family was always very conservative and how her dad really liked to film everything that the family did. My dad always was filming everything. So I just remember always having a camera around. So she's just very naturally used to being on camera. She goes over her childhood and her family values, which is pretty nice to get to know where she comes from. Her mother and her sister also participate in this documentary a lot. You have like perspectives from different um, parts of her life. Thought it was great. As the documentary builds up, there is a very clear notion that her family was always into being perfect. It was hard to just like totally be myself. My mom always taught me to be very proper, private, and to always portray that everything's perfect. To everyone around them, they were picture perfect family. That's what the values of her household were. My mom just wanted me to be a Hilton and I just wanted to be Paris. That's what she was fighting for the whole time, basically. There is this scene around 17 minutes where she's getting 
ready to pack to go to another country to do some sort of uh, promotion for her lines for one of her businesses and you still can there even though this is trying to make her relatable you still see the rich people problems because of her behavior when packing and she starts throwing stuff around and I'm like, oh, rich people problems, you know? She goes to Korea and then she arrives there. I want to mention this because I felt like, okay, this is silly, but she drops a huge amount of cash in the floor of the van and I'm like, why are we flexing here? Unnecessary, but it's in the documentary, I guess they felt like they needed to leave it there because money and then they claim that she is the person who invented the selfie she was like grabbing her camera taking a picture of herself i didn't even know what a selfie was all the things that people are doing today with social media the first person was paris hilton it's kind of like a big claim to say that you invented a selfie because i remember me being a kid taking pictures of myself with those disposable cameras so i'm pretty sure people had already taken selfies before it's just that probably because she is a famous person she made it mainstream then she claims that she invented it but this video is not about that there's also a part in the documentary it shows that she flew to south korea she worked the whole time that she was there she slept very little but then her social media manager says that she needs to be up by six in the morning the next the next day to keep working they kind of make it a little dramatic almost as like oh my god what a difficult hard life she has i know a lot of people that have the same kind of schedule is a little over dramatic and then we go right back into the rich girl problems she mentioning how she travels all around the world but all she sees is hotels airports nightclubs and venues event venues that's work that's what your line of work is bitch i'm like the same i've been to yeah, all i saw was a flight line i've been to... all i saw was a flight line i've been to many other countries and all i saw was a flight line because that's the nature of the job it's okay to mention it and i don't want to make anybody feel that she's wrong for mentioning it but i don't feel bad about it because i go through the same thing and many people go through the same thing people who travel for work has the same life that she does so it's it's relatable yes but it's not something that i would feel bad bad for her c'est la vie they also try to say that she's very lonely a lonely life that she lives she wishes she had somebody to share with and lonely 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 but she allegedly had a boyfriend on the documentary but she mentions uh that she has these recurring nightmares these recurring nightmares make her very stressed and like show you what it's like it's it's terrifying and i relive that every night I believed her because, and that's gonna sound very cruel, but she's a terrible actress. If you guys seen her on TV, watching her in this documentary, I believed 100% everything she says. Okay. Then her sister comes back and they, they have like this talk about her sleep. Her sister is kind of hard on her. I speak to you, you say you're going to bed, then I'll wake up and I'll see you posting an Instagram at like 6 a.m. And I know you haven't slept. I can't sleep. Why? my mind won't stop moving you should greedy and you won't turn down a check yet. not knowing what it, what the real cause is that's that's kind of like the reason why i feel like we have to be a little more sensitive when it comes down to judging people too much because you don't know what people are going through then she starts talking about children to her i think you'll ever have kids it's not for everybody i don't feel that bad for you because i feel like if you wanted kids and you wanted a husband, you would find a way to make it happen. That's rude. If she wanted, really wanted a kid and a husband, she would find the way to make it happen. It's ridiculous. How can you tell something like that to your sister? So by the half hour mark, they start talking about the one night in Paris sex tape that her ex-boyfriend released without her consent. Video showing Paris and her ex was released to media outlets and is circulating on the internet. All of this without her consent. That was a private moment with a teenage girl. You could see it was two people in love and joint ex. Everybody has, and, you know, two people very much in love and having a good time. It, it must suck, you know, to have your family watching that the whole world knows that you have a safe out there with some dude and that dude was a jerk and released it. And now 
you're a famous person so everybody's gonna try to watch it it's it's just kind of humiliating to me they touch a little bit on her problem with trust issues we get into a part where she now has a boyfriend and she's putting like these spy cams all over her room my opinion on this one is that this boyfriend character that she put here in this documentary was somebody that she paid for and there is also no follow-up to it did she look at the cameras did something happen i think that this boyfriend plot in this documentary in my opinion is just to give substance to hammer in the trust issue she's probably one of the most intelligent people you'll ever meet i don't know how we actually believe that she was dumb at the very least she went to high school right i don't know about her education completely and i don't want to be looking for it so if you guys know if she went to college let me know i assume that rich parents and conservative parents like hers would not let her just drop off school when it's their responsibility and, they, and she's living under their roof. It's a, it's a huge given that she will be a very smart woman. My mom had us go to etiquette classes. So we basically were taught how to be in debutantes. It's very proper, very prim, almost like a Stepford wife. I wasn't allowed to go out or go on dates or school dances because my parents were so strict. She wanted to be her age and she was never allowed. And then finally, she was just like doing what I want. And that's where we go on to when she starts to rebel. She started modeling by buying very provocative clothing and jewelry. She started going out and not coming back. The family was starting to get annoyed, They're trying to find her, calling clubs to see where she was. Things started escalating. And their solution was to send her to a outdoor wilderness program. They're designed to change the attitude of your rebellious child. If you guys know that family ate passengers, they also sent their kid to this program where they just do manual labor all day. And apparently also they yell at them just kind of like military training. What parents gonna care what they're doing to their problem child? They want the problem child to not be a problem anymore. So they think that, yeah, that's what they deserve. So these places get away with it. And we're gonna get to that. She tried to escape from the wilderness camp, but eventually she got caught and they actually beat her in front of everybody in the camp as a lesson to everyone that that's what happens if you try to escape. And then she named all of these other places that her family sent her to. Um, she said Ascent, Cascade, Sidhu, and all of these places apparently had the same practices. Where do we, should we move to the moon? We? Like it's not we, they were still in New York. They never moved, they just sent her. Watching her mom in this documentary will make you feel very, very irritated. Rich lady that has no sense of reality. Obviously they needed to put some of her DJing skills up into the documentary, right? They know a lot of people are gonna watch these documentaries, so they have to do a little bit of promoting of her brand, obviously. Now she is going to Tomorrowland, which is like important to her. If this erases, so I've been erases? practicing the set for, for like, two months. Now, I am no DJ. I have no idea how DJing it works, but do you have to practice it? Or you practice a set when somebody else made the set for you? So if you do DJ, let me know. This is the part where I tell you guys that I felt like mm, this relationship does not look very super real to me. In this Tomorrowland event, he gets a little tipsy, drunk. He was not being very helpful. He was being a sloppy drunk. It kind of breaks up with him before she goes into the stage. The whole thing with the boyfriend did not feel genuine to me. Did she tell you she was going to solitary? What do you mean solitary? What do you mean? Solitary. Treating children like they're in a prison instead of a school. Are you serious? She's never told me that. Have you fucking asked? We have reached an hour and 10 minutes in this documentary and now we are entering the territory for the reason why I'm making this video. I knew there was a a takedown in the works. I didn't know it was people coming in and capturing her. I thought I was being kidnapped.
Can you imagine you're laying down in your bed and out of nowhere, two men come, take you, you scream for your parents and nobody does anything? No wonder this chick has nightmares at night. Like how parents can do that to their child? And that's crazy how out of touch these rich people are. Her sister looks at Paris and says, Have you ever said sorry to mom and dad? Her parents were sending her to places where she was being beat up, put on solitary in a how dare her sister try to say that she should have apologized to her parents she starts describing how Provo Canyon school was she said that she tried to figure out a way to get out but there was no way to get out of there they have you sitting down staring at wall and time out all day they would hit and yell at the kids the employees of that Provo Canyon school liked to watch them shower they would medicate the students with something that she didn't know what it was but she said that she would feel tired and numb and many of the kids she would look at them their minds were just not there a lot of people were in watch what kind of freaking school has students in bed watch that doesn't sound like a school then she tells her story of getting in solitary confinement when she found out a way to not take the pills that they were medicating the kids with they make the kids strip and then go in there and she started hating her parents for it and i don't blame her really she turned 18 she got out of the school and then she started modeling something that her mother didn't want her to do. After she tells her school story, she gathered with some ladies who went to the school who had the same traumas that she does. They want to start a movement to bring awareness to everyone about these kind of schools. Yeah, at first, you're like, oh my God, rich kids problems, but they are kids. It's not their fault that they are sent to these places where they can be this way and many of these parents don't care they just want those teens to get out of their house and go to a boarding school but they're not thinking about what their kids are going through and that's the reason why i'm making this video even if the child is a privileged child that was abused in a um, fancy way because it was a boarding school abuse is during this documentary, Paris Hilton is showing that she is damaged by this kind of school. When you go through this kind of when you are growing up, is that you don't know what a healthy relationship looks like. She also tells her mom about her experience at Provo at the end of the documentary. She shows her mom a picture of the promo that they're doing for their movement against these schools. So her mom looks at the photo and reads out loud all of the traumas that her daughter has from this school. Acute panic disorder, nightmares, insomnia and trust issues. She also reads out loud verbally and emotionally, physically abused me. But she reads as a question and she explains to her mom all she went through. And you know what her mama said? Had I known this, you know that dad and I would've been there in one second. At first I thought she was gonna cry, but no, 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 no. She never apologized to her daughter for putting her daughter through this. I don't know if Paris was looking for an apology or not, but in my opinion, that was not good enough. Just saying, oh, if we knew we would've done something. Well, if you looked into it, if you went over there to visit your child, maybe you would have noticed a bunch of other kids that have been drugged into oblivion. Maybe. Just maybe. This was basically in a nutshell the whole entire documentary. Sorry, spoiled for you. However, I must tell you, it is really worth it to watch. So if you have the time, go ahead and watch it. Obviously, you know most of the idea of the documentary now, but I would recommend 100% you watch it. I felt like it was very sincere and it was very honest. It did get me irritated with the mom and the sister. It did get me a little irritated with a lot of the self-promotion that Paris did. In the end of the day, it was good for the awareness of the situation that's been going on with these schools that take advantage of these kids and take their parents money also share this video so we can get the word out there that these schools should not be doing what they're doing it does not sound like they are helping these kids at all also share her video to make sure that she gets as much exposure on this issue as possible even though these kids are rich no kid at any age and at any income deserve to go through what these kids are going through. Please leave a like in this video. I really appreciate it so this video can get pushed through the algorithm and be watched by more people. Also go to my Twitter. All of my socials are gonna be down below and retweet 
my posts so I can give you guys a shout out here in the channel. I'm not going to shout out anybody today because I feel this story is a little heavy to give a shout out. So I'm just going to keep it. Eh? I have an announcement for you guys. If you have been following me for a little while, you know that I am out of the country right now. I'm in Europe and I have been here for a long time. But guess what? I am going back to the United States. I will be back in my studio very soon. And I will be making you guys a compilation of all the things I've done in Europe. And if you follow me on Instagram, you kind of already have an idea of what I've been doing. That's going to be for the near future. So subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and ring the bell button so you can get notified every time I post. Like this video, follow me on my socials. As I said before, they're all down below in the description box. I'll also put down below in the description Paris's documentary so you can watch it. But please share my video so we can have a discussion down below and bring more eyes into the situation this is it for me you guys thank you very much for watching and i see you guys in the next upload bye